this equipment was designed for a different era. Now it's just a piece of junk. Your report? Ah. Thank you, Yeoman. Ah, yo! Did you, uh, forget something? Ah. Trying ya. Hey, is, uh, is that regulation? Mind your bridge. Hey, look what I found in the replicators. Tribbles. Captain's log. I'm commanding the USS Valiant, and it appears as though we have a problem with the primary power relay. It's funny. We have this fleet of advanced starships, yet we still rely on relays to control our primary systems. The relays will reject the overload, Mr. Spock. And bypass the relays with a manual control. Before you remove the relays. Primary EPS relays. I think so, but the EPS relays have taken heavy damage. Navigation circuit relays. Plasma relays on the disruptors. Our cannot be shut off from this relay box. The last attack, 19 main power relays were severed. And impulse engine relays have been overloaded. And the auxiliary relay systems to the maneuvering thrusters. But these relays don't have nearly as much carrying capacity as before. The entire weapons relay just blew. All defensive systems are down. Obviously, this technology was adopted from boat anchors. Bravo, James T. Hey, in D-Lab, though, what we got going on is a Johnson Valiant transmitter with some strange intermittent problems. She'll key up, and at times it'll work, and at times it goes bonkers. Plate meter pegs, got some arcing and a sparking. Let's see what's going on. Here she is, Valiant. Pay no attention to that oscilloscope on the side. Good looking, Valiant. VFO dial feels nice and smooth. Take a look at the chassis. This is a factory wired unit. Pretty clean top side. I don't see any signs of past maintenance at this point. Now here we are doing overall of the bottom of the Valiant. You can see it looks really good. There's no signs of shoddy maintenance. There's no flame out marks. She looks pretty good. However, you see these capacitors? These are the old originals. They need to be changed. No ifs, ands, or buts. These two are in the negative bias section, which can play havoc on your plate current and modulator current. So you have to change these. This is the low voltage DC filter cap, all right? That also needs to be replaced, but if you take a look down here in the high voltage section, this is where it really gets good. You see these 280 microfarad caps? They're wired in series, so they can handle approximately 900 volts. They're rated at 450 a piece. Look at this. They're just hanging in here. That's like super dangerous, people. Now, here's where it really gets good. You see this relay coil? This is what energizes when you key your microphone. And you see that lead right there of this filter cap? That's a positive lead. It's like less than an eighth of an inch from that relay coil connection, okay? So just imagine if you were talking on the radio and that touched that terminal. Kablamo, off go your fingernails, right? We have to correct this immediately. Other than that, I spotted a couple other things. Here, looks like a homebrew current shunt for the plate current. So obviously the little loop-de-loop -loop that Johnson did must have failed. So somebody put that in there. Oops, I don't know what that was, maybe a ghost. Then we get up here, and this is uh, also a little bit alarming. So this is a multi-section mica cap that they use on the back of the loading switch. And if you take a look at these terminals, you'll see they're kind of gray and there's little black marks around them. So I believe that these connections are cold and it's been arcing, right? So before I even fire this thing up, we're gonna correct that. We're gonna put in new caps, especially down here. I'm gonna support these with terminal boards so we don't have this going on. All right, here's our new filter caps that I'm gonna replace the hangers with, all right? So I'm gonna give you a visual. Oop, hey, soldering iron's warmed up. These terminal boards here will be mounted to the chassis, which will secure the main filter caps, and then I'll just run new wiring from these points to
to the caps. And then that will clear up the high voltage problems. Then we'll move on to the other caps and the radio. CD of the night. Toy. Space radio. Some German techno wave, which goes well with working on this techie stuff. All right? So I've got the old caps out, new caps in with the terminal boards. Now, let's move up and do these. All right, we have the electrolytics all installed. High voltage section, safe to operate again. Now, let's take care of those cold solder connections off of the coupling switch. So the best way to do that is to take a little bit of solder wick and remove that old solder, okay? You don't want to leave that stuff on there, all right? So we're gonna grab some solder wick we're going to suck off the old and put on some new. Alright, so the best way to do this is take your solder wick, set it on the cold connection, take some more solder and apply it on this side of the wick. And that'll transfer the heat so that you can pull that old solder out of that connection. So you can see it pulling into the solder wick. Okay. Don't be afraid of it. What you want to do though is get that old gray crusty solder out of there. Okay. So you'd think that's backwards, right? Feed your solder wick with solder. But it is the best way to get it flowing. Right? And after you see that connection that has lost that old crusty solder, now you're going to reapply new solder with plenty of heat. And look for that shiny connection, just like that. Now here's the second one, same deal. Get that wick to do its job by wetting it. You're not going to hurt the connection. Don't worry about that. But you don't want that old arc welded up solder in there. You want some fresh stuff. So you don't want to totally interrupt the connection but you want to remove the contamination. All right, I think we're good to go. Got the new caps installed, negative bias there, low voltage there, repaired the connections on that multi-section Mylar type cap. Down here, new filter caps installed. Everything looks good. I think we're safe to fire it up. Here we go, checkout time of the Valiant. My grid. We're on the 40 meter band. I'm going to go to plate. A little bit of a pegarino there, huh? Go back to grid. That's a little high, so we'll bring her back. Back to plate. Looking good. It's my modulator current. Dead keen about uh, 100 watts, forward modulating to 200 easily. So now, got to let this thing cook for a while, make sure nothing acts up. But I believe the caps were the problem and of course the bad connections that you saw on the video. Now I need to give her a burn in. But I believe that the five hour mission was completed in three. So the Valiant boldly cruises through the airwaves once again with the help of D-Lab Electronics. Bravo. Where to now, my dear? Over there, let's see what lies behind that transformer. Aye, aye. I sat there and watched 
my ship perform for a mass of circuits and relays and sound useless.